Okay, welcome to the Selectman's meeting for Town of Acton, Maine for June 26, 2018. First order of business is salute the flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. We are not live tonight. There's a computer glitch, so we're just going to be taped and aired later. So, first item, approve of the agenda. I make a motion that we approve the agenda. Okay, I'll second that. All in favor? Lisa's not with us tonight. She, I believe, is on vacation this week. So, uh, approval of the minutes of the last meeting. I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes of the last meeting, um, June, what was it? Reverse. Uh, 19th. 19th. I'll second that. Any discussion? Go for a vote. All in favor? All opposed. Department heads and committee chair updates. Do we have any from anybody tonight? <coughs> nope. Seeing none, we'll move on to old business. Atlantic Broadband Agreement. So since we have not heard from them, and I last week we hadn't heard from them, I checked with them again today, and I got an email back from uh, one of the representatives that's handling it that says, Jennifer, I'm currently on vacation. I will be going to the corporate office at the end of the first week of July, and we'll be reviewing the changes and comments with them then. I will get back to you following that review. Okay. So maybe for our 10th, July 10th sure. meeting. Sure. Okay. Next item, McManus property maintenance questions. Thank you. Thank you. Is that one for Elise? Yeah. Okay, we have five questions on here. It's the first time we've seen these, so. Um, do you support the formula formalization of an ad hoc committee to explore the needs to update the current act and zoning ordinance relative to property maintenance do you feel the properties that are cluttered with trash garbage and junk include including appliances discarded furniture scrap metal lumber etc uh, devalues other nearby properties third question do you favor the town to require property owners whose lots adversely affect the neighborhood Become, uh, because of trash, garbage, junk, including appliances, discarded furniture, scrap metal, and lumber to clean up the properties to standards outlined in the property maintenance ordinance. Fourth question is, is it your opinion that properties that have trash, garbage, junk, including appliances, discarded furniture, scrap metal, and lumber, etc., do you value other properties in town? And the fifth question is, if you agree that the committee should be formed, are you willing to serve? So these are questions that we uh, possibly could be asking when are, someone comes into the office. Yeah. So I, I guess two, I'm con and two and four are identical. So number two says, "Do you feel the pro do you feel the properties that are cluttered with trash, garbage, and junk, including devalue other nearby properties?" And then, is it your opinion that properties that have the same items, trash, garbage, junk, devalue other properties in town? And I feel like those are kind of the same, same. question. Yeah. They are similar. You know, you have one area. It's just an overall town picture rather than maybe a neighborhood that might be more or less. Mm -hmm. Was that what you were going to say, Kim, that you felt like yeah, it was the same Yeah, I just question? felt like they were kind of overall the same. You want to know if people feel that there's a devalue of um, property. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, we're not going to vote on this until at least there's right. a chance to look right. at it as well. But, um, but they're all good questions. They are I just good felt that two and four yeah. were kind of... Did you have any additional backups if we were maybe going to, I, could, I feel like I could combine two and four together to devalue other nearby properties in the town of Acton, kind of make the ending so it's one question. Did you have one other one, maybe? Um, I did, but then I thought that it would be better applied if there um, were a committee because they're more specific and they might be um, better discussed in if they're 
should be a committee, which, you know, I hope there is. So. And, and, you know, and, and the board, I mean, you guys can add a question as well, but there's nothing mm. wrong with adding a question. You know, do you feel like these these conversations regarding you know outdoor furniture scrap metal and lumber are irrelevant and that you know the town should not move forward on anything you should you know you could throw a question in asking the opposite as well mm -hmm. okay so yep. so we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting um, I'll make sure at least to see this so I'll make sure she reviews it before the meeting and then we'll yep. yeah and if uh, any of the three of us come up with another question too we could add, to add that to it okay so it looks good though Yep. I mean, it, you know, they're yep. straightforward and understandable, which yep. which is good. You want to just email it to me so I can pretty it up and send it electronically? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No smoking policies. So you asked me to get three samples. So we did. I made copies um, in some for you to take home and read, and we can discuss it more at the next meeting. Okay. Just informational for now. Sure. Some municipalities that have them to make another set, but those are a few different surrounding. We found in calling some of the smaller ones because there's really not a whole lot there for municipalities. It's just mm. a simple sign. No smoking, including vaping. You know, they didn't make a policy so much as just put a sign on the door. Okay. So, but you can decide how in debt you want to get. Sure. Sure. Okay, road association funds. Uh, that's staying on old business because last week we talked about it. Um, Mr. Murray did reach out to me and offered to help kind of work through that and figure out what kind of policy or what we're going to present to you. Mm -hmm. uh, he is on vacation as well, so we're hoping to have okay. something together by the 10th. Okay. All right. You're looking into maybe other towns too and how they... I'm so not sure that any other town has... Are you, I was going to say, do you... Do you I mean, I can I can ask the two attorneys. Obviously, um, I just if Burke and Clegg looked town. into it. I'm not sure which one of their wh who their attorney was that drafted that form, but um, that certainly it's a good point to see. I was if, just thinking if maybe yeah. you know another town had already done this, maybe there yeah. would be an nope, outline to help us. Maybe I will ask him that. All right. Thank you. Yeah, I've, I've heard from one road association. They were curious as to how it would be. Did yeah, we, up and whatnot, we have so. definitely, I've definitely received quite a few calls, yeah. um, you know, did it pass first? And then secondly, yep. how do we apply? So I've told them that, you know, we're working on Guidelines. putting a policy together, but we've got to get some guidance as far as yep. what it actually says. Yep. Okay. 1819 approved purchases, utility truck road bridge, SCBA's parking lot and district one. Yep. Um, just want to make sure that we're on the same page. We talked about this last week, and um, I like to share the love and get these things off my plate. Um, <laughs> I did speak to the fire chief, and he knows that he needs to put the specs together for the utility truck, so that um, is going to come off until, you know, essentially until they come back to me with something. I'm right. not going to chase them, including the road bridge. I spoke to Mr. Winchell, and he knows that uh, he's going to start putting something together regarding that. Same with SCBA. I did tell the fire chief... Um, that was the one area we thought there may be a little gray room as far as, you know, being able to get sealed bids. We're going to find more than one company, but yep. um, yep. I mean, there's he more knows than that one. there may not. Yeah, there's more than one company that makes them, but, but you want to get the same you equipment. Yeah, yeah, you don't mix okay. and match. Right. So he, so. he knows that. Yep. Uh, parking lot at the transfer station, a little bit of a problem, a little bit of a glitch with, um, you know, we got those prices for Warren and Finance and for the warrant um, to get those moved forward. Well, the asphalt prices have changed. Naturally. And, um, and they've gone up, right? My lowest bid, the lowest bid who we had, we didn't award it to, but the lowest bid that we went off of because we know that they were all three reputable companies um, now puts us over by about 4000 more than what we asked the townspeople for. So I'm waiting for one company that didn't bid, and um, he's supposed to get back to me this week um, and figure out what we're going to do from there. Okay. Uh, Michelle did say that it would be legal to take it out of the transfer station budget so bob is already looking around because you know he hates to get it all done but a little portion for a matter of a couple thousand um still trying to work with the company so and then district one uh we talked about that last week you guys told me to schedule a meeting uh, waiting for the vacations to kind of sort themselves okay. out it'll be probably the end of the month before we can get you guys all together okay all right very good liaison memo so uh, same memo that we have last year just changed um, a couple of things obviously we changed the um, selectment information so Ed I just want to make sure I have this right 
you're the liaison to the town hall, the transfer station, planning board, um, and I added zoning board of appeals yep. because that kind of falls in there. Yep, uh, Elise fine. is going to be the rec department, the road committee, and Warren and finance. And then Kim is going to be the school, the fire, and conservation forest. Um, and I did notice as I was going through everything that we inadvertently left off two committees. Um, so because I gave Ed the zoning board, Mary Grant and cemetery. Um, I was hoping that you would take one and we could give Elise the other. I'll, just, I'll go with cemetery. Okay. With that. So Kim will be cemetery, and I think that works out. Which cemetery because lady. Huh? I'm sorry? So it'll be, I'll oh, no, I was just going to say, I think yeah. it works out because she, with the library, she works closely, I think, with Mary okay. Grant. Right. All right. Then, yeah. so, yep. so you both got a fourth one based on that. Yep. So I'll redo the memo and um, get it sent out. Okay. Meeting times, we were waiting for Elise to check with her board as far as the library goes. Right. I don't think she hasn't gotten back to us on that. No. Okay. Okay. New business, tree growth, long. Yep, so this is just a follow-up conversation. Um, I did talk to, to Dennis today, and I got a little bit more information, um, Dennis. The, a few things, if you remember, he came before you last week under public comment and right. had some concerns. Um, this particular property on H Road does have a 10-acre gravel pit that's being taxed as a gravel pit. So um, there are 315, there's 315 acres, um, and it's all carried forward the exact same way it came from the prior owner. So I had um, O'Donnell's look into that. But there is 10 acres being being billed as, as gravel. Um, the other thing I touched base with code enforcement, we added a new layer called tree growth um, about a year and a half ago. So when you go on maps online, if you were to type in this map and lot, there's a box that says layers. And if you click on the one that says tree growth, the entire property turns green. Um, the only thing that the system can't do is it can't differentiate what's in tree growth and what's not. So even though this guy has uh, 10 acres that aren't, the other 305 are, that camel looks like the entire thing is in tree growth. So, okay, so it's definitely a flag. So he can, okay. he can see it. That tells him enough to go look at the property cards and, and go from there. So, so O'Donnell's going to look at the transition? No, O'Donnell has said to me, this property, and, and this is what I wanted to ask you, I'm seeing that it transferred from Nason to Pepin, I mean, somewhere in 2008, 2009. This isn't a, yeah, about it's not a recent sale. No, no. Okay. I just want to make sure I had the right property. Um, in 2012, this property put in it for a new tree growth application. So that's what they're working off of. So even if, um, so if it sold from, from Nason to Pepin in, in, let's say, 2008, right. it had to stay in tree growth. Right. So in 2012, they're allowed yearly to make changes to the tree growth yeah. application. So um, we could compare those two. The notes say that it just the 2012 new tree growth application now includes map 207, lot 3, and lot 2. Right. Um, looks like he added to it rather than taking from it. So I, I guess what I'm saying is when he put in his new tree growth application mm -hmm. I mean tree growth doesn't uh, expire right unless somebody takes it out of tree growth so when you put in your new tree growth application um, and it changed there's still that property that's uh, with the 10 acre pet for example mm -hmm. which was in tree growth when Nason owned it well, we don't know that for sure. I mean, we don't, I didn't, I haven't looked into it to that extent. I mean, I wanted to make sure that we had the same property when, because I, I kind of took based on our conversation um, last week or based on what you were saying is that it was a, a fairly new transfer. So when I realized that this traded hands in 2008, you know, that many years ago, I thought maybe I had the wrong one. So I didn't do a lot of digging. But what I hear you asking me is you want to make sure that whatever's in tree growth when this sale took place is still in tree growth or a right. penalty was paid, yeah. And, and I'm going to be honest with you, I have to double check on how that works with the assessing and the um, transfer of, of yeah. property. I mean, I know that when properties are sold, they stay in tree growth, but when they have, when they put in new tree growth applications, I'm not sure what their legal rights are. So I'll have to I, I guess the reason why you were a little confused, Jen, was because uh, me wandering like I usually do when I talk. I was also talking about the, the piece uh, that Nason owned down there in the hopper. Uh, 
and I do know uh, that they've been in front of the planning board because uh, they bought a back lot, which meant that, the, uh, according to code enforcement, they, they have to put in a uh, uh, Class B road. The planning board said they put a Class B road in up the old stagecoach road. Mm -hmm. And that being in tree growth, uh, and it's been, re you might not even have the deed transfer as yet or something. I mean, I don't know. But I, I do know it wasn't cut according to a tree growth plan. Okay, Steve Bodkin, I understand, is one that did the uh, uh, plan for the way it was cut. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't done according to the plan that Nason had. I, I know that because he cut that, I'm going to say, six, seven years ago. Uh, and what it, how they work is you, you cut so much pine and then so many years you cut so much more pine or right. whatever and then you cut a few years later you cut hardwood and and this here was i mean cut really really hard and it wasn't according to a tree growth plan and, you, and you're certain i mean the, that this property is 100 percent in tree growth or i'm, I'm not 100 percent okay. certain so you want me to double check that so the nason property on hopper road yeah um that's are they currently cutting now? They're done. They're done cutting. Okay. Um, all right. I think I understand. And, and this so, is a problem the town has anyway, because well, all the cutting be. should be done before the town even knows they're, they're going to be doing it. Yeah. Right. I just want to make sure that who we're talking about, the slutmen have talked about, you know, the increases in taxes and because of the money and, and this and that, and this is potentially an awful lot of money, right? Uh, which could offset the increases that yep. we made nope. this year. It you makes know. sense, and I will uh, continue to dig into it. And I'm, I understand what you're asking now from the Pepin property, and uh, Nason I'll have to start fresh with, but I'm sure I'll be calling you. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. We'll leave it on old business until I have some answers. Okay. Request for time off. Uh, it came in yesterday. Uh, the department had indicated that he forgot there was a paper form so he'd submitted it last night for us uh, okay okay yeah the fire chief looking for his vacation yep 40 hours six to the yeah it's one of them's yep. a holiday yep okay. yep okay yeah I'm, i don't see any issues any issues no any issues okay hmm. i do want to look into the policy i mean they're supposed to give us a little little heads up, right? I don't do, know if there is remember, actually anything on the policy what? about timing. I believe there is. Is it? No, okay. I mean, just just in case. I mean, pretty much everybody at some point has. I just I didn't know. Thrown us one that's been quick, so, and then there were some that we have to tell that they need to take it. Yeah, <laughs> and they're <laughs> trying to take it. I know they are. <laughs> so. Yep, and we will try to do whatever we can do to see if you can take it. And I want to take it as much as you want me to I'm take sure it, and I assure you. I'm just going to ship you out. Yep, because <laughs> yep. everybody deserves a break, so especially as hard as, as everyone works. So, Okay, LRAP funds. This is the yearly form for the local road association, uh, association, um, assistance program yep. that the treasurer fills out um, wanting to know how much they were used for the prior year and uh, she's gotten together with a gentleman or I don't know if it was both on one side Hopper and Garvin um, listing out how many miles they completed what the costs were sure yep. let's see so that's is it 500 uh, fifty thousand seven thirty-six. Is that what we get from the LRAP? Is that what it says? To, that's what Last year's two thousand eighteen yeah. LRAP funds. Okay. Well, that's how much you spent, right? That's the. No, no down here it says. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Looks like we spent. Four hundred and seventy-eight thousand five hundred and forty-eight dollars and fifteen cents on hot top. 
Copper Road was 161,433 and Gavin Road was 93,398.52. So, okay. Do we need a motion on that or we just? Yep, sure. please. All right, so I make a motion that we accept yeah. last year's. We sign the LRAP fund. Sign the LRAP fund. Yeah. Of $50,736. Sounds good. I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. Call for a vote. All in favor? All opposed. Back to this for a second. I'm just real quick. Am I confused? Because there's not, if the department is open, how does that, you know what I mean? How does that work? Because we're not, we don't close that down. So should that be 50? Right? Probably should be 30 and 10. No, no. Well, no, because they don't. That there's no holiday pay on that day, because they're not closed. They should be getting it, right? Because they get time and a half. I just got thinking, so I'm thinking that. Let's I mean, they can still this. have the time off. Go ahead. I'll pull up the policy. Yeah. Okay. We'll finish this and then get. Okay. Well, it's today, day twenty-six. It's almost July. Almost. Okay. Well, that's true. They wouldn't be closed that day, right? Would he? No, but you also it? wouldn't. But you normally wouldn't pay. Yeah, how does it read as far so, as? Uh, I mean, so as of January 1st, the holidays listed below were paid holidays for full-time probationary employees, providing the holiday falls on a day that the employee is normally scheduled to work. Uh, Board of Selectmen have the right to reserve. So it's obviously listed there. Um, I would think you'd do. A person is on leave. Uh, the employees. Yeah, he's only put down for 40 hours of. Vacation. Right. And the 10 holiday, he doesn't, and he, he's not including. Yeah, so depending on the department or when, when occasion warrants employees required to work on the holiday, full-time hourly and probationary periods working the holiday shall receive time and half. So I mean, the department is open, right? Right, but he's... And that's his regular scheduled day. Right. So we're not shut down for a holiday. No, so it's so not. I mean, it's just not holiday pay, no, it right? Be right. Holiday pay. It no, would that's just why be he put. Yes, yeah, so he's got forty hours down. So it should be fifty. So it should be should be fifty. It should be forty and a holiday. But he, it's not a. We're not closing. Like, he would be working this right. day. That's how I take it. But we can I mean, double check. Check with, with Michelle. Michelle. Yeah, just um, just in case. Yeah. I mean, Either way, we'll, we'll yeah. make it right. Yep. Appointments. Just one. Thank you. Okay, Selectman Municipality of Acton to Robert Anderson, the Selectman of Municipality of Acton, do in accordance with the provisions of the laws of the state of Maine, hereby appoint you as constable within and for the Municipality of Acton until June 30th, 2019. I make a motion that we accept Robert Anderson as this um, yeah, constable, maybe constable um, with the municipality of Acton until June 30th, 2019. Okay, I'll second that. For the discussion, call for a vote. All in favor? Right. All opposed. Public comment. Anyone from the public have anything they wish to discuss? No? Okay. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I have to give you a hard time. You know that. Clarification is required. Wrong sure. Waterhouse. Um, when the fire chief was selected, approved, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, it was my understanding that he did not work any weekends and no holidays. 
So why are we discussing holiday pay for somebody that doesn't work holidays? I'd have to look at his. Well, we don't. Yeah. There isn't anything. Right. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. The I mean, the the holiday. board can agree to a schedule that he doesn't have to work weekends when when they hired him. But I'm not sure that if they if they agree to a four ten hour shift, I'm not sure they can. They have the authority outside of their personnel policy to tell one employee yeah, that they don't have to work holidays. And there's no written contract that any of us no. have. So I'm Yeah, and there's no written contract with him. So. And originally he started at five eighths and then it right. changed to four so whatever might you know what I mean might have been said, you guys have adjusted based on his needs, but I don't think it was I don't think they can legally tell one employee they don't have to ever work holidays. I understand that, but that was my understanding. Yeah. That he works no holidays, no weekends. I'd well, he the works holiday four tens currently, right? You know, in the middle of the week, and he would be working it, but he's asking for vacation time. So well, that's we, why we're talking yeah, about it. I understand it. Yeah. that. And vacation time should be forty hours, uh, not an extra or whatever. Ten. He, that's what you know, it is. Yeah. So. Well, no, no, no. As far as the extra ten, you know, he we have flex time that we if he has. So let's just say right now he has seventy hours of flex time. Okay, he's allowed to put in and ask for that if he wants to take two weeks off in a row, and. That, and that's what it is. It's not all in one week. He's he's getting he's taking some time off this week, some time off next week. So as long as that employee has the flex time, then the board has the right to, to approve it or not to approve it. The extra ten hours, the conversation they're having is whether or not he's paid holiday time for the fourth, or whether that should be if he takes a day off, that comes out of his vacation flex time. That would seem to be more accurate and more appropriate. We'll we're going to look into we're it. We're going to run yeah, it by our yeah. treasurer and <laughs> our director of personnel and have her check it out and see. Thank you. Thank you. Karen McManus. Hello. Uh, I was just wondering about when, during co public comment, we have our three minutes, mm -hmm. and then you're in the middle of doing something, and then you get a question asked, and then you kind of your three minutes is up if there's a way to stop the clock because like last week I was kind right. of in the middle of what I wanted to say yeah. and I did kind of wait till everyone else had gone ahead because I knew it might go a little bit long yeah. but I was sorry I didn't get to finish and part of that was you know just an interruption of a, a question and an answer and then you know so I just yeah. thought that that might be a something in the future during the comment session that we could take into consideration. It's yeah. a good idea. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Anyone else? Public comment section. No. Nope. Seeing none, we will move on to announcements. <coughs> Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, let's see. That would be Hi. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, road committee meeting tonight at six. Next week there is no Board of Selectmen's meeting. It's the day before the fourth. A lot of uh, fireworks and whatnot going on. People doing things. Um, no Board of Selectmen's meeting on the 17th. That's the vote, I believe. Yes, and uh, someone asked me before the meeting, absentee ballots are available for that July 17th election. And that election is for the marijuana vote. Uh, the July 10th is the next Selectmen's meeting. And not the next one, but there is, a, there is one on July 10th. Um, there's also a public hearing that night for the uh, marijuana. marijuana. So and that is the next selectmen's meeting. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> so. so July 10th is the next time we're back here. Right, and next, then, to, next Tuesday is the 4th, uh, 3rd, and then you took, yep, 10th, and then off of the 17th. Yep. yep. Okay. Do you have anything else to come before the board? I don't think so. No. I guess I'll make a motion. Else, no, no, sir. No? We're good. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. We adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Right. Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you.